It's a big airplane, a huge airplane. And now it's just taking it and moving it across the sky. So what happens is, while it can move its nose around, it starts sinking. You know, the only chance you have against the Raptors, when he's in a turn and he's coming around the corner, and you have an inexperienced guy, because the experienced guys know not to get there, but the inexperienced guy has got, and this is no shit, 28 degrees per second turn rate at 20,000 feet. The F-15 has an instantaneous of 21, a sustained of about 15 to 16 degrees. The Raptor can sustain 28 degrees. Some of these young guys, that's not enough for them. They want more than that. So they'll come around the corner, and, and here you are in your ego, just kind of hoping that he gets scared. You're pointing your nose out here, and he pulls to the point that he goes post-stall maneuvering. Well, once he goes post-stall, the airplane stops moving around the center of lift on the wing, and it goes around the center of gravity up by the nose because it goes on just thrust. And the ASN drops down, and the airplane will rotate like this. Well, in the Eagle or the Viper, when you see that, you immediately go vertical because you know he's not going to be able to go up with it. And you have one fleeting opportunity against the Raptor, and that's it. Now, the real key is you never even get that close to the Raptor because you never see him, and he shoots you before you get there. The F-230, no problem. Big airplane, big radar cross-section. He's jinking and jiving just to get to the merge, but he's jamming. So, yeah, your missiles aren't working, so you get to this visual fight. Well, you roll in on him, and he's got about 22 degrees, 23 degrees per second sustained turn. Nowhere near the Raptor. So we start to pull in on him, and then all of a sudden you see the ass in kick down, and he starts doing vector thrust, but now he starts falling out of the sky. He's falling out of the sky so fast that you don't even have to go up. You just pull the stick back a little bit, pull the throttles, go to guns, and come in and drill his brains out. And while on paper, he has vector thrust, he has all these great weapons and everything, he looks the same as a raptor, He's nowhere near the same as the Raptor. So that was a really good thing for us to find out that we really didn't know until this past exercise happened. We also had the French up here in the Rafale. The French were only going to bring out the Mirage 2000-5, which is one of their older airplanes, until the Indians said they were bringing their newest thing, the SU-30. And then the French all of a sudden said, hey, we, we, we're going to bring in the Rafale. And we go, well, you've never brought that to the States before. And they go, yeah, we're bringing it now. And they brought it out, and 90% of the time, they followed the Indians in. And when the Indians shot or got shot or whatever, the French took a shot and left. And they never really came to any merges. Um, which, anybody that flew with them in Iraq during Desert Storm or during any of the peacekeeping missions, know what they would do is, when the Americans would go and do the peacekeeping act up north, they would stay over Bagram and, or uh, Bahran and uh, uh, down at uh, Al's Garage and fly local sorties and uh, say, yeah, we're participating in the war. What they were really doing is they had all their sensors on, sniffing and seeing how our radars worked. And, and really, that's all they did out here. So they came out and they watched the whole fight with their newest airplane and their newest electronic receiving units and sucked up all the trons in the air. Well, Red Flag Ignellis, set up by all the four stars a long time ago, was to form coalitions with guys we were going to go to war with. So we had to be able to fight with these guys. The South Koreans, God forbid the French, the Brits, 